Oh, hey guys, didn't see you there. What's this you ask? Well, it is my orc army. It's not very big, but it's special to me. I have some boys, a couple knobs, and a whole lot of bikes. My army is nearly playable, so it's about time I painted up my boss. Hey guys, Jay here, welcome to Eons of Battle. The Orc War Boss is a little different to the other leaders, the HQ choices of the 40k factions. Where the rest of the Warhammer Galaxy is made up of strategic geniuses, ancient heroes, kings, warlords, nobles, the Orc hierarchy is more fundamental, it's in their DNA. To explain exactly what separates a boss from a boy, I have to consult the lore. To quote, an Orc War Boss is the largest orc. That's it. They're like the Urkins from Invader Zim. Their leaders are just taller than everybody else. But that does not mean that orcs are dumb. In fact, it's part of what makes them awesome. The orcs are great in their simplicity. Where the other races have long complicated history and tradition that have shaped the organization of their armies and civilizations, orcs basically spring into the galaxy as they are. Mobs of fun-loving idiots. And my idiots love speed. Orcs just wanna have fun. And going fast is the way my orcs have a good time. I've got 10 painted, 10 more that still need to be painted. I love war bikers and their crazy ramshackle motorcycles. To once again consult the lore, the war bike itself is a single seat attack bike with twin linked DACA guns, an exceptionally heavy armament for such a small vehicle. Of course, fixing such a lethal combination of weaponry onto a small and relatively light bike poses a few problems, not least of which is the tendency to buck and spin wildly out of control when the gun is fired. The orcs find that this adds to the appeal of the bike, making it more exciting to ride. War bikers are so reckless that they will even let go of the handlebars when careening into the enemy, the better to lay about themselves with sluggas, choppas, and improvised weapons. I love the war bikers. I've got bikes on bikes, and naturally, if I'm gonna drown my opponents in a sea of orcs on hogs, I need an orc war boss on bike. Boom, and I've got one. The two best things about the orcs, their dumb hulking leaders and their cobbled together death traps of motorcycles. And here he is in all his Forge World glory. I actually have painted up the mini and that's how it has sat in a drawer. I don't have a base and you might have noticed it doesn't have a head. Well, that's because I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted to do with it. You see, my orcs are Mad Max orcs, a perfect combination of the movie Mad Max Fury Road and the orcs of Warhammer smashed together into a shiny and chrome Speed Freaks army. And I have had this dream of making my war boss look like the villain from Fury Road. Immortan Joe, the white version of Darth Vader, this guy has an incredible design. He looks powerful. Although in the film, he isn't really. He's a dying old man. However, when you combine his looks with the orc war boss's power, magic happens. I wanna make my war boss look like he's driving fast on the Fury Road. The problem is, I don't really know how to green stuff sculpt and I don't really know how to build a huge chunk of road. And I could just paint up the head this guy came with and glue it down to the pre-sculpted base. But why go with the sure thing? Why not gamble on something that could be great? I've got a really cool toy right now, but I need to finish it to turn it into a proper model in a proper environment. I also really gotta get started on that sculpting because epoxies are all about timing. I gathered my tools, some green stuff, parchment paper, sculpting tools, and some Vaseline. Green stuff is a rubbery two-part epoxy that is very forgiving when sculpted. It doesn't rip or tear when doing fine details. Parchment paper is great for sculpting on because it's a little hydrostatic, nothing really sticks to it. Silicone brushes and wooden toothpicks are my sculpting tools of choice, but pro tip, don't be like me and get super glue all over your nice rubbery brushes. And I have this green stuff sculptor's Vaseline, which I am 99% sure is normal Vaseline, but I have it, so I'm gonna use it. I cut equal parts of blue and yellow and squish these together. Once it's turned green, I like to squish it for another minute to make sure it's really mixed up. So I've got my one big green ball, and right now it's really fresh and really sticky. So I probably wanna give it about a half hour to start to set up before I really get go into sculpting this. I also probably didn't make enough, so I'm gonna have to make another big green ball. But right now it is perfect, to make into tentacles. One of the most prominent features of a Morton Joe's mask is two what look like vacuum cleaner hoses. I have to replicate these out of green stuff, but if these are hoses, why did I say tentacles? Well, because I have the Green Stuff World Roller Maker, which makes tubes, tentacles, and wires. 
It's got two identical rib sheets that slide over each other and squish the green stuff into ribbed hoses. You roll out a tube of green stuff about the same size as the rollers, grease up the plates, then place the green stuff in the middle and rock it back and forth. It works pretty well. I don't know how you do this without this tool, but when the green stuff is so soft like this, just a little handling is all it takes to squish it. I made a bunch so I have options in case I break some. This isn't the easiest thing in the world, but once you get the hang of it, you have to apply almost no pressure to get it going, and then you apply more and more pressure to get that texture to really sink into the green stuff. I set those aside on some parchment paper to cure. Now I can't sculpt an orc head as good as the orc head that came with this kit, which I've lost, but luckily orc heads are a dime a dozen. Let's see what I got in the old bits bin. I have lots and lots of orc heads, but not many in the size I would need. I did find one option though. I found one warboss head, the classic assault on black reach orc head. That should be perfect, but I have a feeling I'm not gonna nail it in one, so I want some options. And this beautifully laid out jewelry case full of bits is not actually representative of all of my orc bits. I'm gonna go have to get the bin. To my great shame, most of my orc bits sit unorganized in a drawer. Uh, not looked at in years, but you know what? Maybe I'll find a head. I sifted through my bits like a six-year-old sifts through their Legos. I did manage to find some options. I found some knob heads. They're a little bit smaller than the Warboss head, but maybe that's all right. The Warboss head is crazy big, where the knob heads look more appropriate. Perhaps a bit small, but not after what I'm gonna do to them. I glued them down to some paper clips and then it was time to get sculpting. I used a toothpick to rub a little super glue on the face and then I applied a green stuff mustache. Then I filled in the rest of the mouth with more green stuff. I used some hobby nippers to pinch away excess material. Then I used my rubbery brushes to smooth out the mask. I used a hobby knife coated in Vaseline to start on the nose. This is where I discovered that sculpting is tricky. Then I carved in some fake teeth. A Vaseline coated toothpick does work well to poke and prod the green stuff. It was really easy to work with. It took the impression of anything I did with the brush and knife. The problem was me and my inexperience with sculpting. Here is the final result. I like the long teeth, but I'm thinking I'm gonna give it another try, see if I can do any better. I started this time by making the mask and then putting on the mustache. This seemed to work a little better. I mostly used the knife to do the important things and it worked out well. I think I like the long teeth better from the first try, but I think overall my execution was cleaner on the second, so that's the one I'm gonna go with. Well, sculpting is really hard, but I am happy with my second try. So I'm gonna set those aside in a safe place for the rest of the day. And now it's time to work on the base. And the base this model came with is a giant pill. And the reason it's a giant pill is because it's from back in the day when Games Workshop had all of their cavalry type units on these pill bases. And these were terrible. And I actually didn't put my orcs on these. I put them on big old 75 millimeter oval bases and Games Workshop agreed with me that these look better. And so Games Workshop has actually officially changed these models to come with the 75 millimeter round base. So I'm gonna get rid of this big old pill and replace it with an oval base. I had to decide if I wanted my war boss on an incline or decline. Usually heroes are pointing up, but I think I actually want him driving his war bike down. Anything to get that little extra speed. I marked out some cork in the shape of the base, then I drew on my road and cut it out. Then to make my ramp that this orc will be rolling down, I hot glued some pine bark nuggets down to the base. In the middle where I didn't have any bark, I filled it in with foam and then went to town with a Dremel tool, smoothing it all out. Which made a big old mess, so I had to break out the vacuum cleaner. Now the base was ready for my road, so I glued it down with hot glue, little by little snapping it off after each glue so that there was cracks in my Mad Max road. I used my hobby knife to make some gouges in the cork. It's important to try to make cork not look like cork, so I smeared plastic putty over the cork to make it look a lot more like smooth asphalt. Then I broke out the Games Workshop Agrella and Earth Crackle paint and put this on here and there. You want to really glob it on so you get nice big cracks. Then it was time to smooth out the base. I put some milliput in between all the pine bark and the cork road. Once that was dry, I coated it in some wood glue and sprinkled on sand. Then it was looking like a nice natural desert with an old road running through it. I'm going to give that sand a little while to dry. And while that's drying, I'm going to go back to the orc head, which I seem to have misplaced. I found it. Our Patreon. Over there, we have lots of cool STLs, both miniature and terrain, ready to populate your wargaming tables. If you sign up, there's a welcome pack that includes Dawn of War Space Marine, Imperial Guard, and Eldar Terrain, all hosted by comics, games, and things. We also make Patreon-exclusive videos where we critique viewers' models and weekly Discord hangouts. We also have merch. Link in the description.
I pulled the now hard orc head off the paper clip and decided where it would sit on the neck. My green stuff hoses were also fully cured, but green stuff is naturally rubbery, so they are still really flexible. I cut the hoses flat on one end, then glued them to the mask with a drop of super glue. Now it was really starting to look like that Joe guy. I used some milliput to lengthen the neck so that the head was looking slightly up. Well, it turns out don't make the neck out of milliput because it is super duper soft until uh, four hours have gone by and then it's rock hard. I didn't want to wait, so I scraped out the milliput and replaced it with some dried green stuff. And that worked better. I figured out how I wanted the hoses and then clipped them and glued them to the back of the neck. To start the hair, I squished the milliput over his neck, then used some parchment paper to roll a flat pancake of milliput that I cut into a triangle of hair and then laid this down over the warboss's head and shoulders. Then I made a smaller triangle and layered this on top like a cake. And then an even smaller triangle. I smoothed it out with my fingers and then used my knife to scrape in some lines to make it look like hair. I'm using milliput instead of green stuff for the hair because milliput can hold finer detail. Although this is looking kinda bad. I took my silicone brushes and made some deep gouges in his hair and this much more exaggerated texture worked better. After all, nothing is subtle in Mad Max. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. And now I have to set them aside to dry for many hours. This product is all about the waiting game, but the base is dry, so I can work on that. I made a big old mess, so it was time to clean up. I primed the base black, then gave it a dry brushing of dark gray, then gray, then just a dusting of light gray. Then to create my road markings, I made three lines of the base using painter's tape. In the middle, I wanted a dotted line, so I made marks every half inch and then put little pieces of painter's tape over each mark. Then I made myself puffy paint, paint with a little putty in it. This will make the road markings look like they stand up off the base a little. I stippled this on. About three coats gave me the height I was after. Time for the best part of any project, demasking. Please look cool, please look cool, please look cool, please look cool. And yeah, it looks pretty cool. Those are some striking road markings. Now time to cover them all up with black wash and then some brown wash and then another light gray dry brushing. Then I used my airbrush to base coat the ground a nice tan. And then I rubbed some yellow and red pigment powders all over the sand. There is a misconception that you have to use some sort of glue to keep pigment powder stuck down or else it'll fall off. But really the super fine pigments get trapped in all the micro scratches and details on the model and are permanent. That's a base. And now that the base is done, back to the guy. I brush on prime the warboss's head gray, then filled in the details with speed paint. I used gray on the mask and hoses, bone on the teeth and white on the hair. I put some silver on top of the mask and then base coated the orc skin a nice dark green. Then a green wash and then many layers of light green to highlight his impressive brow to perfection. After that, all that was left was assembly. It's done. My war boss is complete. My orcs have a Mad Max thing going on. I've got white shirts and black pants on all the boys. They're standing on yellowish reddish sand. I have a lot of bikes, but nothing really solidifies this army as a Mad Max army until now. I'm so glad I decided to try and Mad Maxify my war boss because now this is truly a themed army and anyone will know what they are with one look at this war boss. Introducing Immortal Joe. Yes, that's his name. The Mad Max character is called Immortan Joe because they just say some words wrong in Mad Max, like guzzoline instead of gasoline. And I think it's funny if the arguably dumber orcs actually have better pronunciation and they're able to say the word properly. Immortal. I am pretty happy with how this head turned out. It's not perfect, but I think it's pretty easy to see what I was going for. Immortal Joe, fastest of all orcs, ready to carry his boys through the gates of Valhalla. Orcs care little for the lessons of yesteryear or the promise of tomorrow. All that matters is the violent present. Scream loud, fight hard, drive fast. Thanks for watching.